Well, I know it's no Rolls Royce, but we call it home. Hi, I'm Henry Tenenbaum. Welcome to PM Magazine. Today, you're going to join us in the PM Magazine van as we present the most requested story we've ever had. It's about how we put on PM Magazine, what goes on behind the scenes. You're going to join us as we go out and shoot a story and put a whole program on the air. Then in our second story, we'll watch a woman walk into a bank vault and run off with $10,000. And she's going to do it perfectly legally. In our PM Magazine departments, Chef Tell makes a spicy and delicious Hungarian goulash. In the self department, our extra sensory guide, Joyce Jilson, is going to show us how to develop our ESP. And in the discovery department, Linda Harris continues her great escape to the Caribbean with a look at nightlife aboard a cruise ship. But first, lights, camera, action. Roll record for PM. Stand by to slate it. I'm not. Slate it. Roll two. Take black, fill your beeps. Ready to fade up tape two with track. And track tape two. Fade it. This is the master control room of WDVM-TV, Channel 9 in Washington. It's a wonderfully complex room of gadgets and gizmos and blinking lights. And from here, a piece of TV fare called PM Magazine rolls each weeknight. But what you and your family see at 7.30 p.m. actually started about five weeks earlier. Why don't we go over some story ideas? This is the office of PM Magazine producer Melanie Donahoe. And the people gathered here are members of the staff. This is called a story meeting. It's a get-together that falls somewhere between a gathering of the board of directors and a fraternity house bull session. It's during these weekly meetings that potential story ideas are submitted to the group. Decisions are made on whether an idea will make a good PM story. And where do the story ideas come from? Well, they come from you, our viewers, via phone calls and mail, and from magazine and newspaper articles that our staff of college interns has clipped. But today, associate producer Ellen Eisenstadt submits an idea about local runners carrying the Winter Olympic torch. And the idea is accepted. The story is scheduled to be shot February 1st and broadcast February 20th. It is February 1st, and PM Magazine's Purple Unit sets out to shoot a story on the Olympic torch runners. Photographer Rick Armstrong, audio operator Tom Cheeseman, and story producer Ellen Eisenstadt have a long day ahead of them. It takes six to ten hours to shoot an average story, which will eventually run about seven minutes. The ride to the location is the first chance the crew has had to discuss today's story. Well, the question the is, travel. we do one or the other running. Right, let's do the woman running, because right. it's going to be in a park, and we'll have control of the situation, and there are other elements we can do with the man. Okay. Within the broadcast industry, PM Magazine is known as a producer's and photographer's show, and an editor's show, as we'll see later. But much of the creativity in this type of program comes out of the unique photography and producing styles that are used. For instance, this interview with torch carrier Mary Ellen Williams could have been shot in her living room. But shooting it on the run like this hopefully gives the program a fresh and a different look. It takes more time and energy to do it this way, but the 7.30 time slot is highly competitive. After 10 hours over two days, the bulk of the Olympic torch story is committed to tape, but it is far from being finished. What are your duties in this whole business? It's more than just carrying a torch. Oh, yes, I guess it's a, a roll over the back. Story producer Ellen Eisenstadt must now review all the tape that was shot. She takes extensive notes while watching the three hours worth of tape, and out of this post-producing session comes a first script for the story. Tomorrow night, you'll get the chance to see if Ellen did a good job producing the Olympic torch story. That's when we'll air it. But even if you don't like it, you must admit that lady sure can dance. As you can tell, I'm not the only ham on the staff. It's just that the rest of the folks usually don't get to perform on camera, and they accept any excuse. Now I get involved again. Ellen's completed script comes to me for voiceovers. That's the narration, like what I'm doing right now. Having a newspaper editor's heart, I usually do a bit of rewriting. But I've been assured by the PM staff that they adore these minor criticism. And that's why I'm so loved and respected. You understand what I'm saying? Henry, <laughs> get this! That's our associate program producer giving me today's ration of respect. If you really want to understand our show, you have to understand the carefully planned systems under which we operate. And they are summarized by boards like this on the walls of our office. Now, for example, this is our shooting schedule. And this tells us that Olympic Torch is being shot February 1st. This is our post-production schedule. And according to this, we know when the producers can come to write scripts. But before you can figure that out, you have to come over to this board over here. This is our editing schedule. And according to the editing schedule, the editor will start editing Olympic Torch on February 11th. That means you come back over here and figure out that the producer can write the script on February 9th or 10th. Then you come over to here to figure out when the story's going to air. 
And the story will air on cards like this. Um, well, this is all a little complicated, I know. Uh, when we get confused, we usually just check our TV guide. Rolling. Up to this point, the crew has spent 10 hours shooting Olympic Torch, and Ellen has spent about six hours post-producing and scripting the story. Yet with 16 hours' work, not one second of the story is yet ready for broadcast. That's where this man comes in. Joe Hearn is one of 2 p.m. magazine editors. He and Tressa Hamby put stories together like a jigsaw puzzle. There are plenty of pieces, and sometimes they fit together easily, and sometimes they don't. Joe must edit together every second of picture and every second of sound so smoothly that you'll notice only the entire jigsaw picture without seeing the individual pieces or the seams. And it takes Joe about a day to edit the Olympic torch story. When are they going to give me a day off? And yes, we do give him days off, but very rarely. And oh yes, another ham. Well, it at this point, I think, is some historical footage. The editing process is completed, but there's a problem. It seems like there's always a problem. That's the PM way. The finished story runs a minute long. So Joe and Ellen, along with producer Melanie Donahoe, must decide how to trim 60 seconds from the story without damaging its content. It takes Joe another three hours to shorten the story by 60 seconds. Roll record for PM. About 30 hours of work have now gone into our seven-minute Olympic torch story, but it's still not ready for broadcast. Director Jeff Barron must combine the story with the other elements of the show to make the program ready for air. Downstairs in videotape, engineer Mark Schaefer works with Jeff in assembling the show's introductions, departments, and stories into a complete half-hour program. That done, there's usually time for Jeff and the crew to contribute their own performance. We all love PM. <laughs> As you can tell, the hams aren't restricted to editors and producers. With Henry <laughs> of course, there are other elements to PM Magazine besides the lead story. Phyllis Ward prepares what we call ins and outs, those introductory remarks and epilogues to each of the show segments. I, of course, perform them professionally and thoroughly. Tomorrow night, we'll... <sighs> and meet some of the fans who make annual pilgrimage to his... pilgrimages to his hometown. Tomorrow night, we'll continue our look at this amazing entertainer... <laughs> PM Magazine Departments are produced by Valerie Whitmore. It's her job to schedule and coordinate the production of the 92nd Departments, which aim to give our viewers some information they can use. Like all good producers, Valerie credits her crew of John Bullard and Tony Cunningham with making departments easy. We work very well together. We're, we're like a family. <laughs> And that, faithful friends and viewers, is what's behind the scenes of PM Magazine. Thirteen staff members and some super college interns put on a TV show every weeknight at 7.30. We'll be back in a moment with our PM Magazine departments. You know, the ones produced by Valerie Whitmore and John and Tony, edited by Tressa, supervised by Melanie and Murray.